Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engine. Yes, I got my computer fixed and it's finally back after a month of um of not doing that. Uh, my mic again. I'm actually using a different recording software than Fraps because Fraps sucks. So uh I don't know if it'll even work. If it does work, then the speed will go up. If it doesn't work, well then yeah, yeah, yeah you'll, ne you'll never know. Anyways, where the hell am I? I have no idea. Uh, this is just a fresh version of the game. I haven't even played with any of the settings. So, uh, yeah. So let's go looking for places. Um, there are a few... Alright, let's, let's get out of the galaxy quickly. Uh, there are a few suggestions of places I should go. Oh. Anyways, yeah, there are, a there are a few suggestions of places I should go. Um, however, I can't really alt-tab out of this. I can set it up so like it only records the game, and then I could alt-tab, but I don't know. So I'm going to try something different instead. Fixed it. Alright, uh, let's, let's try this. Is that, is that a thing? Object not found. Rip. Um... Alright, let's try some other things then. Alright, uh, we have this one, which is HIP 73815. It has planets. None of them are terribly interesting. The cool slater might be nice though. Let's go there. I sound very weird to myself right now. I think my ear is screwed up or something. But when is it not? I don't know. Or I just haven't been recording in a while like this, so. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty cool place, and by cool I mean it's just kind of cold. But it's kind of pretty, I suppose. Are my graphics up to snuff right now, or do I have to do setting changes? Yeah, I may have to do some tweaking in the settings, but uh, I will be sure to do that, don't worry. Alright, this is another one I was recommended. Apparently it has a lot of pretty planets, so let's go there. Yeah, actually, uh, one thing, I've mentioned it before, if you're going to recommend places to go, um, don't, like, just, like, wall text a million places to go, because that's, it's pretty irritating, not going to lie. Um, it's like, if, you know, three or four, I guess, is fine, but don't, like, just say, oh, go here, 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 and here, and it's like, okay, you may pick or choose your favorite. Um, this is a nice place. It has life, too kind of life? Let's find out. Um, it's abiogenic, it's organic, and it's multicellular, marine and terrestrial. That sounds remarkably familiar. Um, what's the atmosphere looking like? Carbon dioxide, oxygen, sulfur dioxide, w water, argon, and krypton. That's pretty standard. 10% oxygen. Not bad, I suppose. Uh, that's a lot of carbon dioxide, though. A lot of carbon dioxide. Um, this has moons, and one of them apparently has life. No, I know the planet itself has life. Well then. Woo. Well, that's kind of pretty. Has a nice hue to it. Uh, let's check out the information. I'm gonna guess now and say, yep, hydrogen and helium. It's always hydrogen and helium. Uh, how about that life? Panspermia, so it's not local. And it's aerial, of course it would be. Organic, multicellular. Now we got a prevalence of carbon-based life going on in the star system. That's good, I suppose. Um, what else do we have going on here? Huh. A lot of interesting places. Very bright, Saturnian-like planet. Well, only Saturn's not a frozen ice giant. Saturn is a warm gas giant. I don't, I don't know what Saturn's labeled as in this. Hmm. I don't know. Um, what else went on here? In its friend. No, oh, I guess only one source. Let's go to the innermost planet. Because why not? Boop. My goodness, that's bright. Interesting things, interesting things. Um. Oh, there's actually been a lot of interesting things, actually. Ooh, uh, Insight is getting ready to launch uh, for next year. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to Mars. It's going to drill. 
it was supposed to be launched two years ago, but there was a, a an issue with one of the experiments they couldn't quite fix, so they decided to just like postpone to the next launch window. Looking forward to it. It's gonna be good. Going to be good. Um, what else is on here? Eh, let's go somewhere else. Uh, somebody recommended that I look for stars using parallax, which is actually an excellent idea. It'll help me find lower mass small stars. Kinda like this one. Uh, that's an orange dwarf. Let's try this one. It's a white main sequence. Nope, I clicked on the wrong one. Actually, parallax is how you find, or you can determine distance of objects. Red dwarf. By you to see how much it moves relative to other stars and yourself. Alright, we're on here. Ooh, that skinny looking system. Or little ring, skinny little ring system. That's kind of cool, actually. I think I like that. You know what? I think I like that. That's my phone telling me it's gonna die if I don't plug it in. It's a little melodramatic. Here, I'll plug it in. Wonderful. Anyways, back to this wonderful little planet. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, it kind of looks like you, uh, you know, a cartoony. Yeah, go away. It kind of looks like a cartoony kind of. Just get rid of all these actual minute to make it just kind of really set the scene. It looks kind of like a cartoony planet, you know? The kind of thing you'd see someone drawing in, like, an elementary or something. I like it. I like it a lot. That is nice. Um, it has moons, too. They're just asteroids, though. This one isn't, though. Let's go there. <coughs> Ugh, my throat feels kind of off. But it always does. I don't know. <laughs> It's actually been a pretty good month. I just haven't gotten a lot of done in terms of video stuff, but I have gotten stuff done um, in terms of projects. Uh, like my balloon project that I was originally going to do this year, but I couldn't because... what was that? But I couldn't because, well, I didn't have enough funding, and there weren't any thunderstorms, which was just weird. Um, ah, screw it. I've actually done some work on that balloon, plus one that I want to do Sometime this winter. I don't know when, but sometime. It's another red dwarf. Um, it's gonna. It's, it's gonna be like a test balloon, or it's like the the capsule itself. It's roughly the same shape, but it's smaller, and it's just gonna carry a camera and tracker and nothing else, and it's just gonna basically test. It's basically a dry like a dry run or a dress rehearsal for the actual science balloon, and uh, no idea when I'll launch it. Uh, depends on when I can. Like get the parts, like 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 the camera specifically, and the tracker and the helium. Basically, just you know, whenever whenever funding allows me to, I can fly it. But it's not weather dependent, so we can launch whenever. Uh, whereas the other balloon um, is weather dependent because it has to fly through a thunderstorm. Actually, I have a, I have a picture of the finished capsules up on the screen right now. Uh, I finished them up. Yeah, I think last week. But they're just empty shells right now. Like they don't have any equipment in them. Uh, but they're pretty cool, actually. I even have the parachute sitting next to them that I might use for one of them. Um, yeah. If you actually want to like help out with that or learn more about them, I'll have a link uh, below to the Facebook page for my program that talks about the, all this. And there's a PayPal you can go to, or you can like use if you want to donate funds to. It's a specific PayPal just for the program, so it's not personal funds money. I was getting tired of having my PayPal account as a business account, so I just made a, you know, specific one just for the program. It also makes the whole thing much more comfortable because, you know, it, it's much e it's much easier for me to, like, keep a track on donations and not worry about accidentally like having it mixed with my money because I, I don't I don't want that to happen. Any money I get through donations goes straight to the program and not to me. And I do get I, I do get donations sometimes, just not a lot. Red dwarf. I'm looking for interesting red dwarfs. Wonder, wonder what I'm doing. I'm using the parallax of these stars to look for nearby faint ones. <laughs> well, there's also some more intrigue about. Ah, there we go. Lots of orange dwarf. Let's go there. About possible planet nine. Um, it might.
might be there. All the math checks out. I just need to find the damn thing. <laughs> Which I really actually kind of hope they do, because it'd be kind of fun. Um, using current technology, there's pretty much no real hope for us to get out there, because it would be like 20-year one-way transit. And, uh, I mean, New Horizons was 10 years, but even that was kind of a stretch for waiting. Do, 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 do. Unless we use like a torch drive, which I've talked about frequently because I love them, but we don't really have a workable one right now. Um, well, there's ideas, I suppose. The Orion drive is kind of a, uh, a torch drive, um, but that requires detonating nuclear bombs in space. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, water, and argon. Uh, there's also like this Dr. Zubrin's nuclear saltwater rocket, which it's kind of cool, but it's incredibly dangerous because you basically have water containing uranium fluoride. I think it's like uranium tetrafluoride salt or something like that. And it um, basically you have them in these carbide tubes, and then when it, it gets injected into the reactor core, um, they react and fission, and you get a lot of steam and thrust. It's basically like a, like a continuous nuclear bomb going off. You know, if you overdo the fuel, uh, your engine explodes. If you underdo it, you don't go anywhere, and the fuel's radioactive and poisonous. Other torch drive ideas are kind of like, um, I think it's like fusion internal, like either internal or external confinement fusion engines that use like pellets of deuterium and tritium, or helium-3 deuterium, and you shoot them into the reaction chamber and laser them and they react, or you just use direct plasma. Like there, There's ideas, but none of them are really workable. I'm kind of working on one idea, um, it's not terribly original, but it's kind of a, oh, that, that's a tiny star, but it's kind of a, uh, a work, I should say a jump off from my, uh, like, like, like the engines I'm going to use my, my, my rockets, like just like the, like the thermal rocket thing, but instead of having a rigid tank that contains both the water and the heat and pressure, you have, um, basically a bag, a non-rigid tank that takes, like, no mass, and that contains, like, you know, water that's then pumped through a heat exchanger or a core that's heated up, uh, either, either with a nuclear, like, through it via a nuclear pile, or a, uh, ooh, go away, or, like, a solar collector thing. It's, like, basically anything from the Earth to Mercury, you could use the sun, but beyond that, um, a nuclear source would probably be the better option. Anyway, it, 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 would, it would hardly be a torch drive, but it would, you know, have the bonus of just using water as fuel, so you could literally just stop by any comet or ice moon and uh, refuel without having to process anything. But, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, ooh, red dwarf binary with life. Let's go there, shall we? Boop. All right, what's going on here? You there. It's organic. Well, all right. The plant looks kind of ethereal. It actually does. It's kind of pretty. Look at that galactic center. Um, yeah, actually, no, I can't really... Oh, actually, wait, I can do that. And you can kind of see the, uh, the rings as stars pass through them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Information, what's going on here? Um, hydrogen, helium, neon, and nitrogen, that's pretty standard. A lot of hydrogen, a lot of helium. You know, it's like the co like the most common molecule in the universe, I think is, um, isn't it like carbon monoxide? And then the second most common is water. I'm pretty sure that's about it. I know water is really incredibly common, because the three most common elements are hydrogen, helium, and oxygen. And helium doesn't bind to anything really, uh, but oxygen and hydrogen do. They form a you know a hydride of water, so um, that's kind of cool. I like chemistry. Can't see I'm terribly good at chemistry, but I like chemistry. Like seriously, you know, I I, I kind of bullshit my way through it a lot. <laughs> it's like I know enough to like work with to work with it, but a lot of times when I'm just like spouting off chemistry facts, it's like it may sound semi-impressive, but I actually I'm not terribly good at chemistry, uh, especially organic chemistry, even though that's like one of the mainstays of my, like, what I do, 
Um, I'm quite terrible at it because I always forget, especially the uh, like the ethane groups or like what do you call them, hydrocarbon groups. They always screw me up. Woo. I, this, this, I, I really miss this, you know? I really miss Space Engine. It's so great. It's a cold desert. It's kind of an interesting planet, actually. Mostly carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, carbon monoxide. Yeah, see? Haha. Uh, CO. Uh, water. Wait a minute. Carbon. Carbon monoxide. Carbon's like, the, I think, the fourth most common element. So carbon monoxide wouldn't be the most common. It would be water, wouldn't it? No. But what if it's ozone? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know what? Hang on, I'm gonna look this up because I don't want to like giving, I'm like giving out false information. All right, as far as I could tell, it was saying water, but I was, hmm, which makes sense, I suppose. What do you want? Oh yeah, uh, I have a new kitten, by the way. Yes, hello. You wanna say hi to people on YouTube? Or you wanna chew on the mic? Okay. Yeah, um, oof! He's currently sitting on my lap and purring loudly. Unlike my other cat, he does not have much of a voice, but he, uh, he has quite the purr. Yes, don't chew. And he's chewing on the mic again. Um, he's great. When, like, when we first got him, he was only a few weeks old. Yes. Okay, you need to let go of that. You need to let go of that. Yes, but he's, uh... Oh, shoot, how, how old are you? He's a couple months or something like that. He's a few months. I, I, don't, I don't remember how much he is right now. But he's still quite tiny. Um, and he's quite fluffy. And he keeps hitting the mic. Uh, his, his tail's really grown out, though. I'll, I'll post a picture of him. You can see it's not really bad. Okay, okay, get off my shoulder. Sorry about that. Um... He just is very enthusiastic to play with the mic. Uh, anyways, back to the game. And now I have to keep the cat in line while I'm... Yeah, because, like, after, um... Cause, like, I had two cats. They were sisters and all that. And one of them died a little while ago in July. And the other one, she just kind of... I don't know, it, it really didn't, didn't go well for her. Um, she needs somebody to, like, you know to keep her exercising and to play with, so uh, we gave her, you know, a couple months or a few months to kind of grieve and get over, and then we got this buddy, and uh, first week she just wanted nothing to do with him, she absolutely hated him, but then she became more and more okay with him, and now she won't admit it, but she actually enjoys having him around, and uh, they cuddle him, they cuddle a lot, she grooms him, it's like, alright, she accepted him, yes. And he's mostly well behaved, except for he likes to steal food from plates, which we're trying to trying to teach out of him. But he's very determined. And he's still purring. I don't know if you can still hear him, but I can certainly hear him. He's just looking at the screen now and purring. Uh, anyways, what's this? Dust cloud. I was looking for more low mass stars using the parallax. What are you? Orange dwarf. Binaries. Oh. No, off the keyboard, buddy. Uh, another orange dwarf. No, off the keyboard. What? Don't chew on wires and don't play with the mic. Alright, well, it's a good thing this video is almost over because he's just. He just is really enthusiastically wanting to play. I'll give him a napkin or something to play with. <laughs> Uh, whoa. Hello. That's a red dwarf right there. Let's go there. Stop chewing on the wires. He's not terribly smart. But what he lacks in intelligence, he makes up for in love. Boop. Alright. Wait, this looks familiar. It's kind of like the other planet we saw. Only the color palette isn't as pretty. It's still pretty, though. I like it. Well, anyways, I think we're going to leave off there. I'll be back with more Space Engine later. If you have ideas for where to go, please let me know. Uh, check out my program, linked below. Um, yeah, I'm actually still installing stuff on my computer, so all my games are currently not on it. 
This was the first one I installed. I actually, well, I also have Kerbal Space Program too, but I need to get other stuff on here and uh, good to go. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And, space.